Okay, hello everybody and welcome to the Elmer Fem webinar series and uh, this will be our last presentation uh, in the series now in spring uh, and it will be given by Professor Roman Chevchik and his team. Uh, Roman comes from uh, Warsaw University of Technology from the Faculty of Mechatronics and uh, also from uh, uh, PIAP, uh, the Industrial Research, Research Institute for Automation and Measurements in Warsaw, Poland as well. And uh, Roman has been act actively involved in the development of LR. So actually the uh, Helmholtz vector, Helmholtz equation was initially uh, sort of the I initial idea came from Roman and uh, he was active in the development and funding of the development of the module and uh, we have been all happily using it ever since and uh, uh, well the technical host will be Mikael Kanerva and uh, uh, he will talk us through the technical details here but everybody Welcome to the web last webinar series, and uh, especially Roman and his team. And uh, now we go to Michal and the technical details. Yes, welcome also on my behalf to this last of the Elmer Fem webinar series. Um, a few short details and nothing more. Uh, we have presentations today and four main speakers. If you have questions to the speakers, please use the Q&A function. Uh, the Q&A function is behind the icon with the Q&A name at the bottom of your screen. If you want to have a speaking turn or ask for one, we will give that to you after the presentations. After presentations, we also answer all unanswered questions. And to ask for a speaking turn, please use the raise hand function on the bottom of the screen. This webinar, as the previous ones, will be recorded and will appear on uh, LMRFM's YouTube channel. I'll put the link in the chat and also there will be a link in the chat to the materials of the presentation. Welcome. Uh, good afternoon. Let me, let me, please let me share the, the screen. Uh, okay, uh, my name is Roman Szewczyk and together with uh, the team we will show you some industrial oriented uh, applications of microwave modeling uh, in Elmer uh, and we will also try to tell you a few words uh, about our, our experience uh, connected with Elmer, the practice which we had uh, during last years. Uh, let me say shortly about the plan of presentation. At the beginning, I will tell you a few words about the history and the most important ideas behind the, our work with Elmer. Uh, then Dr. Anna ostaszewska liszewska uh, will show you how to use meshing in Elmer uh, for microwave modeling, uh, especially with problems representation with 3D uh, objects. Then uh, Mrs. Uh, Dominika Kopala, our uh, students, she will be graduated next uh, week in the, in the Monday, uh, but she is very experienced in microwave models and she will tell you about C files and some physics behind the modeling. And next, then next again, uh, Dr. Ostarska tell you um, how to perform presentation of 3D vector fields because it is not so easy uh, thing in case of uh, such couplet fields like it, you observe in microwaves. And finally, Professor Jakub Szałatkiewicz uh, also show you some practical application of microwave technology uh, and Elmer models. Uh, our team is split and work together uh, in two most important institution in Warsaw. One is Warsaw University of Technology, Faculty of Mechatronics. Our university is one of the biggest universities in Poland, established in 1915. Now we have about 30,000 students and 19 faculties. 
a second institution in which I also work for the last 20 years uh, is Industrial Research Institute for Automation and Measurement. It's now a part of Łukasiewicz Research Network, which is public research body focused on technology transfer since 1965 there. Uh, as institute also involved in military technology, but not only. And both those institutes are located in Warsaw. In the center, you can see our Warsaw main mermaids. Uh, this is the uh, only one mermaid around the world, which is Sweetwater main mermaids. So, so every, all, all mer mermaids live in sea, our live in Vistula River. Uh, she is earned, she has uh, a sword, but she is very friendly. So uh, our adventure with Elmer generally started in 2012, when we start a cooperation with Radvac, Polish private company. Uh, and this uh, company was going to develop microwave motion analyzers, uh, which are for assessment of uh, humidity level in biological materials, in food, in yogurts, and in other uh, such objects. This is very uh, interesting uh, laboratory equipment which it was produced only by two companies around the world. So it was very expensive, very profitable uh, microwave measure analysis and we start to develop it and we realized that key that key barrier in development of such uh, measure analyzer for laboratory is microwave chamber. To develop microwave chamber for, for such equipment we have to keep in resonance uh, and it is not possible to develop resonance chamber without modeling. Uh, but when we look around for uh, commercial software, we realize that cost of such software for commercial application, because it is strictly commercial application, uh, the cost of uh, such software would be about half, half of our project budget. So uh, we start to look around for a better solution and we found, found Elmer and Elmer team. And uh, Elmer team developed for us uh, microwave module for Elmer, uh, and then we developed uh, microwave chamber for for Radvac. Uh, this microwave chamber was uh, introduced to the market. Now it is a moisture analyzer, microwave moisture analyzer, and it is introduced in global market. It is sells uh, globally, and now Radvac, Polish company, medium Polish company, is first third company in the global market, uh, which offer uh, moisture analyzers, microwave moisture analyzers, due to use Elmer software. So this was this was uh, very important, very interesting experience for us. And now we use Elmer uh, as a standard for our education, for our research. Uh, why? Because there is no problem with commercialization. Uh, you have open source license, you can use it for commercial application. Second very important thing um, is that Elmer can be easily integrated uh, with other software in, in large systems, large structures, what is especially uh, important for optimization process. Here you see such structure when Elmer is working together with Octave, when Elmer is working together uh, with Octave uh, and we were making some accuracy uh, analysis of frame shaped samples. So, so it was, it was mag magnetodynamic uh, model, but the principle is the same. Uh, you can control Elmer, for example, by the Octave during the optimization process. It is, it is, it is extremely, extremely if efficient even if you use a desktop, high-end desktop computer. You can you can make uh, enormous and enormously efficient optimization process. Uh, we also use Elmer for uh, accurate for modeling, mag 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 magnetodynamic modeling. Uh, we use for ten tensor description of permeability and for modeling of magneto mechanical dependencies. But this is this is another another story. Uh, so in this moment. Let us guide you through all micro, micro, micro wave system modeling which we perform. And first will be Dr. Anna Ostaszewska Liszewska, uh, who will tell you about tetrahedral meshes for modeling and generally for about model, about meshing issues. Thank you. And please, Dr. Ostaszewska, floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, because we wanted to have as much control as possible on the mesh uh, parameters, we decided to use some external mesh generators. And uh, for obvious economical reasons, we focused on the open source ones. We could use GMesh, which is probably the most uh, famous, most popular, fast, light, user-friendly with uh, its own graphical user interface. We could use Salome, uh, which is a great cross-platform for pre- and post-processing, uh, or FreeCAD, famous for parametric modeling. But we decided to use NetGen uh, because it offers modules for mesh optimization and mesh refinement, which was really important for us. Uh, besides, right now, NetGen writes uh, meshes in Elmer format, um, so far linear only, but that's not a problem indeed. Uh, besides our... Um, team work works uh, remotely. We've got computing uh, units uh, all over Warsaw in different institutions. So uh, we prefer to work in text mode besides uh, we uh, automate our scripts, uh, our computing series with uh, scripts uh, in Octave. So uh, the lack of uh, GUI is not a problem for us. Besides, uh, this uh, model is super simple. It's just two uh, cylinders. Uh, so it's just a couple of lines in uh, NetGen. So the step, the first step would be to define geometry. In NetGen, we define solid primitives and then conduct logical operations on them mm, and then uh, generate solid. Uh, we start the document in NetGen with algebraic 3D uh, command, which denotes that we are working in three dimensions. Uh, the crisscross denotes a comment, and to, to, um, to use uh, a solid, we give it a, a, a unique name, we choose a type of a solid, and then uh, we uh, precise some, uh, some parameters. In case of cylinder, that would be two points in the space, and the radius. Mm, to generate object, we use TLO command and a unique name of a solid. That what we, that's what we would get. Uh, it's not what we wanted. Uh, we need a, a, a cup and a bottom because the pipe is empty. And um, it's obvious that we've got to perform a, a logical end operation on two planes and, and uh, this cylinder. But uh, a great su surprise for us was that uh, if those planes just touch the bottom and the top, it won't work. Uh, it, the, the planes should cross the sides of the cylinder. So that's the life hack number one. Um, to define a plane, we just uh, give coordinates of one point of the plane and coordinates of the normal vector. Uh, and uh, that's how we uh, perform uh, a logical end operation on those three bodies. Um, and we get uh, the cylinder we wanted. That's just uh, the half of our model. And the second part is made just the same way. Um, in the end, we join uh, these uh, two parts together using a uh, logical or operation. And, uh, and uh, after all, we generate the object. Be sure to, to generate the final solid only. Um, the life hack number two is that um, NetGen uses meters as, as a unit um, by default. Uh, but if you are working on a smaller um, thing and you are too lazy to recalculate millimeters to meters, you can use uh, millimeters and then finally uh, rescale your model uh, using Elmer grid. I will show you how to do that in a minute. So uh, when we've got the geometry, we've, we are ready to generate the mesh and that's what the best in NetGen because we, uh, we've got uh, the full um, control over uh, the parameters. We can um, set the mesh granularity, which is rather obvious, but we uh, can um, uh, take control over the mesh size, uh, we can optimize it and even uh, take control over the bugging. Um, this is the example of uh, the influence of only one parameter, uh, which is the mesh granularity on, on the mesh size uh, from the recourse moderate to refine. As uh, we can see, it's a big difference. And uh, the truth is that the quality of the model uh, and and uh, the time you want to spend on computing it, or the um, 
um, computing powers you, you, you've got, uh, it's always a compromise. Uh, and uh, thanks to NetGen, we can find this compromise more precisely as we've got the control over the mesh. Um, so finally, we are ready to uh, save the mesh for Elmer. Right now, NetGen enables to, to save uh, the mesh in Elmer format, as I, as I mentioned before. Previously, it was not possible. And if you are using other mesh generator, you can have the, this problem too. Uh, then you can convert the file using Elmer grid, just uh, giving two parameters uh, for the input file the output file and the mesh name. Those parameters of input file and output file are those uh, magical codes you can find in, find in uh, Elmer Grid um, manual. <laughs> and uh, what is important, you, you can use some parameters. And in our case, we used scale, which uh, turned our millimeters to pairs. Uh, and uh, uh, it is useful to use uh, Auto clean because it changes body indexes and body IDs so that they start from the number one, not several thousands, which makes uh, preparing CIF um, file uh, easier. And finally, we are ready to, to set the CIF file. And Dominica, the floor is yours. Thank you. Let me share the screen. Yeah. Uh, OK, thank you. Uh, so, in this part, I would like to introduce the physical phenomena on which the project is based. To generate resonance inside the given chamber, there needs to be electromagnetic field of specific parameters provided to a given waveguide. In general, dependencies between electric and magnetic field are described by Maxwell equations. Uh, here I gave two of them out of four in total, which describe Faraday's and Ampere's law. In terms of mathematical description, there are actually three ways in which they can be provided. Here, time harmonic form is uh, used uh, for the reason that it enables introducing wave frequency given in the form of a circular frequency. Uh, to describe uh, how electromagnetic waves propagate, uh, Maxwell equations need to be transformed into the, in the form of Cranford's equations. Uh, when designing a model, there are two groups of the parameters that need to be considered. The first group are values that can be cho choose arbitrarily, of course, in accordance to the requirements and the concept of the project. For example, here, the resonance frequency was just uh, close to the frequencies used, uh, for example, in microwave ovens. Uh, materials for walls and interior were well, also uh, one of those commonly used for microwave technique. Chambers and waveguides shape was decided to be cylindrical uh, and they were drawing uh, axisymmetrically. Uh, the last parameter is the waveguide. Uh, it mainly determines uh, the field distribution across the cavity and the waveguide. The first part, TE, uh, refers to uh, how uh, electric and magnetic, magnetic field vectors lay in the plane uh, perpendicular to the radiation propagation direction, whereas uh, all the digits refer to wave modes. Uh, the first M and N refer to uh, wave in the waveguide, whereas uh, the P uh, index uh, describes the wave in the cavity. Uh, this specific type was choose as, according to the literature, uh, cylindrical cavities uh, with such wave type uh, characterized in very high accuracy. Uh, here on the right, you can see uh, the the theoretical uh, shape of field distribution in such chamber. Uh, the other group are the parameters that need to be calculated output formulas that describe the specific and chamber. Uh, here, all of these parameters are uh, models dimensions. Uh, as frequency, uh, resonance frequency for the chamber is given in a formula that depends on wave type, the diameter, and length of the chamber. Uh, having already uh, resonance frequency and uh, wave type, uh, we can calculate the diameter 
but previously assuming uh, chamber's length. In both chamber and waveguide, uh, the length was uh, assumed by, uh, by an integer multiply of the wavelength. Um, but uh, in the waveguide's uh, diameter, it needed to be uh, calculated out of the formula for phase constant. And the issue was that uh, the space constant needed to be a real value. In the case the diameter was uh, was shorter, uh, the phase constant would be, would become an imaginary value, which would cause the model to be lossy, uh, despite the simulation uh, being an uh, in, imperfect environment, ideal environment. Having all of the parameters described, we can construct the final uh, Helmholtz equation for the given wave. Identifying vector depends on the wave type. We will plot e, this is magnetic field strength uh, vector in z direction. Amplitude of this vector uh, depends on the way the waveguide is uh, stimulated. The fact that uh, there is used a Bessel function and also cylindrical coordinates. Uh, it is, it is done as uh, the waveguide is of cylindrical shape. Also, we can see another parameters dependent on the wave type, or also waveguide's radius and phase constant, which depends on uh, waveguide's uh, diameter. Um, moving on to the SIF file, I just wanted to briefly describe this, a few parts. Uh, the simulation part, uh, uh, in simulation part, I described uh, the simulation is described as steady type as we are looking for a solution in equilibrium uh, condition. Uh, moreover, uh, we are not looking for a time dependency in our solution, so there is no, no time stepping needed. The result file will be saved uh, in a format that uh, will be handled later by Parabi. Equation consists of uh, three solvers, which I will describe later on. And additionally, angular frequency was attached to all of the solvers. The solvers uh, used for this project were, were are divided into two groups. Uh, the first group of solvers is specific for the problem describing Helmholtz equation. And this, the second group is universal that can be actually used for any type of project. So, I, I will I will not uh, describe it in detail. Uh, specific for the problem are vector Helmholtz solver, which uh, implements Maxwell equations itself, and vector Helmholtz help fields. Let's us uh, let us choose uh, which parameters of the electromagnetic wave should be calculated as the result. Uh, the first solver uh, uses vector Helmholtz solver procedure. Uh, the omitted part at the bottom this, uh, refers to the methods used for solving uh, differential equations, which are actually present in most of the uh, physical problems, so I didn't uh, describe it in detail. But it is worth mentioning that for all of the parameters for calc fields are calculated relative to the vector of electric field. Also, constant sparkle was introduced in order to simplify uh, wave equations and other formulas used further in boundary conditions. The second solver calculates, as I said before, um, lets us uh, choose which uh, which parameters to calculate as a result. Um, this, once again, the omitted part refers to methods of solving uh, differential equations. Uh, ju just to say, as uh, in the safe grid data, uh, in the safe grid data solver, only uh, only electric field and magnetic field strength vectors were saved in an external file. Uh, so the clue of uh, of the project in terms of its description are the boundary conditions. Uh, we used two of them. The first one is input that describes the source of electromagnetic wave. And the second one uh, are the walls. In perfect conditions, they could be simulated, uh, simulated as, uh, as uh, fully reflective, but actually we are, we are looking for more realistic conditions. So 
uh, absorbing walls were described by Leontovich in pedant's boundary condition. The, the, input, uh, the input boundary condition was described in form of Rabin boundary condition, which consists, uh, consists of two factors. The first one is dependent on the uh, phase constant. The second, the second one um, is described by the previously given uh, vector Helmholtz equation, but uh, in a slightly different form. Here we can see simplified Bessel function. The reason we simplify uh, this function is that in its original form, it is an infinite uh, power series. Uh, additionally, here we turn uh, cylindrical coordinates into, uh, into Cartesian coordinates. Uh, boundary condition for walls is described uh, again in the form of Robin condition, uh, but this time it is only uh, only one factor, which is actually Robin coefficient described in the equation below. Uh, it depends on on material of the interior, material of the walls, and of course uh, resonance frequency. Um, in case anybody is interested uh, in uh, looking into the code in detail, uh, here I attach a repository with uh, geo file for geometry and CIF file for Elmerfem. And here I would like to give uh, back floor to Anna as she will present the results of our simulation. Thank you. Uh, to visualize visualize data, we used Paraview, which was uh, rather an obvious choice. Uh, we used Paraview because it's an open source uh, multi-platform application. Uh, it enables for uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, visualization. Uh, and we can explore data in 3D interactively, which is important. Uh, we can do some batch processing using Python scripts and so on. Um, our goal was to find the areas of resonance uh, of ascending waves in the chamber, and Paraview gives uh, a lot of um, uh, possibilities. Uh, it offers uh, a great variety, variety of filters. We can cut the body, we can color it with data. For example, here we've got uh, the uh, electric field distribution and magnetic field distribution. We can make uh, some parts of our body transparent and visualize only one plane inside, for example, as, as you can see. If we like the picture, we can save it, uh, having uh, uh, control over the size uh, of the file. Uh, we can change the background to white, for example. Uh, we can choose uh, a format. So Paraview is uh, a, a really big uh, thing. Um, we can visualize data using glyphs. Uh, for example, here we've got vectors of electric field. In case, uh, uh, if, if it looks like a complete mess, uh, we can uh, decrease the number of data we are visualizing or just visualize only uh, data in one plane, in one slice inside um, to, to see what, what is happening in our model. Uh, because everything looks better when it moves. So you can prepare some animation, for example, uh, rotate by, by rotating camera and see what is the distribution of, of vectors. Um, in this example, uh, these are electrical, uh, electrical fields uh, vectors. You can resize them. Uh, maybe it helps. Um, you can uh, uh, analyze uh, um, your model slice by slice, uh, and there's uh, a life hack number two. If you are afraid of, of codex, uh, problems with codex uh, of animation, you can always export a series of uh, pictures and then turn it into GIF. GIFs always work. Um, our final uh, goal was to examine the influence of microwave chamber dimensions on, on the distribution of areas of resonance. So we computed um, and visualized two series of, of models, uh, one with changing diameter and the other with changing length. Uh, so maybe I will ask Jakub to tell us about the results. I will leave my presentation and I will switch your, my slides. Hello. 
just like Anya uh, described, um, the, the visualization or visualizing the, let's say, magnetic and electric uh, field inside the <coughs> Uh, resonant or not resonant or on the waveguide uh, is is uh, extremely important and uh, it gives the opportunity to uh, to actually um, design properly the, the the device. We're not doing uh, let's say the modeling just to just to find out what is happening, but in case of microwaves, just like Professor Shevchuk said on the beginning, uh, it's. Uh, necessary and it's uh, impossible without the modeling uh, to dis develop and design the properly design the uh, microwave devices of course uh, in el earlier times uh, before the such uh, sophisticated software was uh, developed uh, there were simple calculations and graphs that allowed to to calculate the modes uh, in the waveguides and in the resonant chambers However, as you see on the uh, actual um, image, when you increase the size, uh, the, the height of the, of the um, uh, resonant cavity with the waveguide on top, the, this, the field, electric field distribution changes completely. For instance, now it's completely off, then it's even, and then it's going to different uh, sizes and uh, intensities, intensities in, the, in the chamber. So actually, it's such a <clears throat> such a good um, solver or or software that allows to um, put also the, the the let's say the um, to find out the angle, the, the exactly value in the exact spot in the chamber. So you can uh, apply calculations for a given change. For instance, one millimeter in top every millimeter. Uh, in this higher and to cal calculate the actual the, the, the field intensity in the given point. This was very important in our work to develop the microwave uh, resonant cavity for the, the microwave dryer and uh, we, we made like hundreds or even thousands of those uh, simulations. So this is how it looks, the, the, the electric field distribution or the, the microwave radiations is completely uh, different than uh, common, let's say, sense. Uh, you would think that changing two millimeters in high won't make a difference. Well, just, just like you see on the slide, it makes a hell of a difference. It's completely changing the, the field distribution and the intensity in the, in the given point. Uh, okay, and can you make, uh, put another slide, please? <clears throat> the same thing applies to the changing the um, the size of the of the cylinder. This is the cylinder case. Uh, you can observe exactly the same uh, uh, occurrence. In one place, you have very strong, just like now, uh, resonant and standing wave, and in between, you'll find uh, different modes uh, that that changes and and makes uh, uh, sophisticated shapes that uh, aren't useful really for the for the engineer. Uh, okay, we can go for another one. Here is the example that where we started with the Elmer modeling of the microwaves. You can see the uh, rectangular cavity, uh, just like microwave ovens have. We have the, on the right hand side uh, the waveguide which uh, feeds the microwaves into the chamber. You see the three nice, um, in, let's say, in waves. That, that enters from the waveguide. There is a red point where, where the magnetron is and the, the microwaves are being fed. This was modeled in El Elmer. <coughs> this is the feed through uh, uh, po uh, point where the microwaves enter the cavity. And then you see the, the microwave field distribution in the actual chamber. So we can see three mods in the um, three on three, no, three on four uh, actually. Uh, it's the, because of the size of the, of the cavity. Uh, so this was the initial step, the first step, and now we can go to the second, to the next one. And these are, uh, uh, again, another um, models and all the results of the modeling uh, in, in, in Elmer uh, of the magnetic field, of the electric field distribution in the cavity, in the cylindrical cavities, fed uh, with the microwaves being fed through the waveguides, rectangular waveguides. So <clears throat> as you can see, 
the the cavity of diameter 250 millimeters uh, is um, is ex excited with uh, different uh, wave pattern and in the 400 millimeter is completely different we were looking for the optimum um, optimum let's say field distribution inside because it's not only when you develop the microwave heater or the dryer it's not only about the field uh, distribution but also the actual we have to put a, a sample inside which, which is uh, a flat plate uh, on which the, the the dried material is being placed so it can lay down on the like a flat it can stand it can be in different positions so there are different parameters that, that we were investigating to get the, the optimum uh, spot these are the exemplary um, let's say uh, calculations so we could we could put the, the 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 optimum place for where to put the sample is where the electrical field is the in the most intense. So that's why you're looking for the for the for the points where the the, the electrical field is uh, with the highest intensity. And in those um, examples, it's on one hand it's hard to distinguish where where the sample should be put but on the other hand it gives you exactly location of the hot spots uh, on the left uh, of the smaller cavity uh, you can see there is a high intensity spot on the left hand side by the by the entrance well from the waveguide and on the right hand side uh, where 400 millimeter diameter cavity is uh, is uh, around the middle so it's it's really interesting that with changing the the, the size and the, the height of the of the chamber you can influence the actual field distribution to find the, the right spot. Uh, please another one, Anya. Oh, thank you. These are uh, <laughs> why do we do this? Yeah, that's the that's the that's the question. Uh, because we want to find uh, the best, let's say, uh, match for uh, for the energy being being uh, transmitted from the from the waveguide to to the sample and to increase the drying time. Well, decrease the drying time and increase the efficiency uh, to to forward whole power from from uh, microwaves into the dried sample. Uh, the top chamber uh, is is the bigger one. Uh, I think it, it's 250, and the small one is uh, is very small, which is uh, fed with two with 5.8 gigahertz frequency. These are the different ones. And on the right hand side, you can see actual where the where the sample is. These are the the, the initial uh, designs of the um, of the setups for uh, for R&D purposes for finding out uh, how the heating is being. Um, let's say carried out in the chambers and uh, then after those uh, let's say um, experiments and learning from them uh, how the microwaves work and is the actual calculations in line with the reality we 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 make another step uh, please another one Anya. and uh, this is another uh, design of the uh, microwave uh, resonant uh, chamber where the actual um, sample for drying uh, sample being dried by the microwaves is standing on uh, like a like a uh, not horizontal yeah, no vertical uh, so it's being placed against the, the microwaves uh, entrance as you can see on the right hand side uh, um, let's say model a 3d model there is a um, let's say uh, and, and iris or uh, how you call it uh, let's say an opening in the waveguide it's not the full opening it's just a slice like a triangle uh, if you <clears throat> that's another thing which is completely out of line with the common sense with microwaves you have to you have to uh, let's say um, uh, how do you say that uh, you have to uh, stop relying on the common sense and you have to rely on the of the results from the model which is completely completely different and and uh, it changes uh, changes let's say design uh, procedures so you model first then you find out what's what's the best thing and then you try to manipulate with the different uh, parameters for instance the length of the waveguide the 
uh, size of the chamber, and then you you approach the problem that you want to increase the the intensity of the magnetic of the electric field in the given spot with the given uh, cavity and, and the size, and then you, you start to tweak the the, the the opening from the wave drive, and you find out that when you shrink the, the the size of the of the opening, the electrical field inside the chambers being increased like ten times completely out of line you know, with common sense. But it is like that. So the resonant uh, chambers are really, really interesting and uh, uh, really not in line with the common sense, uh, let's say, experience. So this is, this is another, another design, uh, what, we, what we've investigated and, and uh, developed in, in, in the way of uh, developing new microwave uh, dryer for, uh, for our uh, partner in the project. And uh, the next one, please, yeah. And the next one is showing uh, the, let's say, the final result from the operating um, prototype model of the microwave dryer with the uh, pyrometer on top for measuring the temperature of the, of the sample uh, to to the which was which was uh, then. Uh, Mm, let's say rearranged by the company, by the Radva company, to to the ready product, which looks just like on the picture uh, on the right hand side. Uh, the the interesting thing and, and funny thing on one hand is uh, that the microwaves uh, uh, are living their own life. Let's say in those words. So again, out of uh, out of common sense, uh, let's say uh, correlates. Uh, guys from from company, they said, okay, the chamber would be better to make it a bit smaller. We're gonna attach this one from the different angle, make it a bit longer. It shouldn't affect that. So it did, and it just stopped working. They did something, and it just stopped working. <laughs> then then we had a, a long discussion. We asked for the actual dimensions, and they sent us the dimensions. It seems that they've. Uh, uh, I, I can't remember exactly what was it, but they, they shrunk one, one dimension and they did something inside the chamber. And uh, we, we run it through the Elmer again uh, modeling. Uh, we, we find, the, um, let's say, the, the actual wave, uh, wave pattern distribution. And uh, we said, okay, change this parameter, add a slicer, do this. And it should work. They did that, and it's working too now. So <laughs> that's that's um, how how important the modeling in in such applications is. And without that, it's really hard to develop any any let's say useful and optimized um, appliance uh, for, uh, for 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 use. Yeah. All right, that's it from my my side. Thank you very much. And if I could uh, make some summary uh, for for uh, the presentation, please. Uh, in our opinion, this what is important is that uh, microwave module for Elmer um, is a radical innovation. What does it mean? It means that it changed the world and the market of microwave model. Uh, it enabled small and medium companies like Radvac to participate in global market on really high-tech products uh, and high, highly profitable products uh, in the area of microwave production, microwave development. And this, what is really important for us, it is that Elmer is very flexible and very easy to integrate in larger systems. It's perfect environment for scientific research, but it is another story. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, uh, for your attention. I would like to thanks a lot for all my uh, co-workers for uh, last uh, many, many years of uh, work together and great experience which we which we had together in the in the world of modeling in the world of uh, microwave. And I would also like to thank a lot to all Elmer team for the efforts and for invitation to this seminar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roman. Very, very nice work. It's always nice to see, see that the simulation is really used to something useful. And I don't think that there are so many equipment that has been designed with Elmer. So 
So this is really nice, nice work. So do we have any questions in the audience? So let's see. Well, I would actually have a question. So <clears throat> I guess these uh, problems may be quite difficult to solve. So what kind of linear system settings do you use? Do you, maybe somebody can comment on. So because I know that Helmholtz equation can be difficult to solve it. It requires really good preconditioners or or some direct methods. So do you have any comment what, what methods to use? Mm, in case I can present, I, as far as I remember, there was the Vanka system used, but other parameters I don't remember right now. Okay, so you use Vanka as preconditions. Yes, so yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, that's, I think that's very, uh, not very often or frequently used, so it's interesting mm -hmm. to note. But for, for this type of problem, it is very useful. Yes, yes, I understand. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Do we have any further questions? Maybe I would also have a second question uh, on the accuracy. So now, when you, in the end, made the final sort of design, so how much did the uh, experimental results then differ from the simulation simulated results. Was it uh, in a few percent range, or, or how how reliable are the results? It's uh, to be honest, it has to be in line completely with the with the actual dimensions in the model, unless uh, it's let's say one millimeter uh, difference. It, it depends also on the size. In the smaller systems, the difference will be smaller, but one millimeter shouldn't make a huge change, but it's also hard to verify, is it uh, completely in line? Because the actual measurement of the intensity of the electric field in the resonant chamber, uh, it's not so simple. You have to yes. input some sort of rod or, um, device that will uh, take the microwaves out and then you, you have to uh, match them with the with some sort of measurement system so it's 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 hard to really to to verify is it working but well is it is working but uh, in terms of percentage or actual enumerate the, the change uh, the difference uh, but in, in terms of the the size of the di the diameters the the heights the, the di dimensions it should be within the range of, let's say, one up to two millimeters. I wouldn't go farther than two millimeters. It, it might stop working, really. And, and it has to be very, very close to the, to the parameters that we model. There is, a, 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 let's say, some, 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 some room for, for the error, but it's not so, not so, not so broad. OK. So, yeah. And does the specimen that you have in the oven, does it affect significantly the optimal results of. Yes, that's another thing. It's a much broader um, problem than, uh, than it's just to, to model the, the cavity. When you put something inside, there is a different um, object inside. So yes. you're, you're not modeling actually the, the air you should put into the model something uh, like with different electrical permeability and other parameters like uh, uh, absorbance of microwaves. So it's uh, decreasing the, the actual uh, electric field. So it, it's very complex. Also the, the walls which, uh, which are uh, surrounding the, the whole cavity, uh, it's, uh, it should be, should be put uh, as an actual uh, material, like a copper, when you use copper, uh, aluminum, steel, uh, it makes a difference as well. Uh, just like you say, the, 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 um, the equations are pretty tough to, to solve, uh, especially when you're going to introduce like a uh, uh, plastic uh, holder, for example. You should also apply them in, into the, the model. But it doesn't affect uh, very much the, the field distribution because it's, uh, it's not electrical conductor. 
uh, it's it's something that the, the waves just travel through and uh, it's just a matter of uh, of dropping down the intensity but, but yeah there are also different um, how do you call it uh, uh, different different uh, occurrences which which are happening for instance when you boil water uh, the chambers start to behave completely different and uh, this is something that Elmer can do now uh, but uh, uh, we want to. We, we wanted to do uh, for the moment to approach to the to the where the, the water will boil. For yes. instance, but then you have to remove the the water vapor from the from the chamber, and uh, that's why the the the, 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 the small uh, dots are the, the, the holes are uh, around the chamber. Yes. And yes. On the other hand, it changes as well the the, the resonant uh, not the resonant frequency because it's when you when you uh, apply the microwaves, it's. Uh, it's you, you you mostly say that it's two point forty five, but it's plus minus ten uh, ten uh, megahertz, as I as I recall correctly. So okay, not so strict with microwaves. Okay. Uh, do we have any other question? Mm. Unfortunately, we had a. Uh, program challenge. So this was postponed by a week because it turned out that this day is, is a public holiday in most of Europe and uh, also like elsewhere. So so this may have affected the number of participants, but usually we have many times more people looking at the webinar presentation in the YouTube. So okay. So, but unfortunately you can't Ask the question from the YouTube. So, so, but if there are no we other have a, questions, we have a uh, hand raised by Wolfgang okay. Weiser. Okay, sorry. So, Wolfgang, do you want to ask a question? Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, being a micro engineer myself, um, I am interested. Uh, I have a question regarding the. Um, the cavity uh, conductance, uh, in this case, it's copper, um, in uh, strong coupling. Uh, do you have any, um, any idea about the amount of uh, power dissipated or heat dissipated in the walls of the cavity? Well, actually, in this model, we did not examine it, so I cannot say anything. I, we only examined actually uh, the the field distribution inside the, the cavity. Okay, but you know you are, um, you know what power you introduce into the cavity, so. Uh, if there is no uh, dissipation. And not much dissipation except for the part being dried. Um, the rest of the energy must be dissipated in the walls, if I'm right. Uh, true, true. Uh, well, I can I can answer uh, a bit of that. Um, we are feeding. Well, it depends because uh, that's what Dominica was modeling uh, is um, about, let's say, exemplary uh, device. It not it wasn't the device that we 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 were using uh, in the actual design of the microwave dryer. In the microwave dryer, we used uh, magnetrons of the power of uh, 850 watts. About uh, the chamber gets. Uh, Gets let's say heat from the from the power loss, which is which is obvious thing, and it gets warm uh, after a few minutes of uh, of applying microwaves. Uh, it warms up a bit, and then there is a second thing because the, the as you know as you when you're an, an RF engineer when you fit in the the microwaves the the, the energy then it bangs off and returns to the magnetron through the source and it's being um, uh, let's say irradiated from the from the magnetron. That's why they heat up so so badly. So this is this is another thing. If you uh, won't put anything that will absorb the, the the microwaves inside the chamber, the losses uh, the losses are gonna be the power losses are gonna be pretty pretty high. So yeah, it is like that. I think uh, that's one more comment from my side. Uh, you mentioned in one of your last um, 
slides uh, that you don't have a, a rectangular uh, input to the cavity, but something else like a skew surface as I could see it. Um, that makes sense for me because the cavity um, has to resonate and uh, and it, you put something like a, uh, like an obstacle at the at, at the feet side at the feet waveguide so uh, you you arouse the, um, the resonance and uh, if if it's resonant, it, it, it gets reflected between uh, on both sides. On the, on the far end from the, from the input, you have an electric wall. That's right. Uh, on the other side, you have some obstacles, so it's reflecting back and forth. Isn't it? That's, it, that's exactly that's, uh, that's the, 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 the effect of this, uh, of this iris. Uh, it's uh, blocking the out, uh, outflow from the resonant chamber and the, it's maybe not the coupling is better, but the reflected power uh, drops down and uh, it increases the, the electric field uh, inside the resonant uh, cavity. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, that was nice. We even had a RF engineer listening to the presentation. So uh, I guess there are no further questions. So I thank the speakers again. And uh, uh, this is the view of the uh, series that we have had, had. So we have had nine presentations. I think we have like, when this presentation will be in the YouTube, we will have like maybe 12 hours of program there. So I think this is a good place for the, uh, those interested in Elmer to start. And also it will demonstrate some nice examples. Uh, all the material is available uh, on YouTube. And uh, also the slides are available in this address that Mikael also already, I guess you put that to the to the chat, so, uh, and uh, Mikael and his team has been nicely editing the videos, so so all the worst stumbles have been edited away, but uh, so I think they are uh, uh, nice for the viewers to watch and, uh, and, and uh, certainly, give added value. And we already see that the webinar has created some buzz. So uh, I think the community field has increased because uh, some of our best users and developers sort of were brought together and uh, we have already got new users and uh, a lot of new social media followers. So, so I think all the social media channels are like plus 20 or 30% during this two, three months. So, so, and if you have any discussion that you would like to continue, if they are more like the technical questions, you can use the Elmer Fem discussion forum, or of course you can contact us developers. We are behind that Elmer ATM address, or you may know our address, email address <coughs> uh, also in person. And uh, it may be that we continue this on all, in the autumn if we get enough interest and the enough sort of contributions. So I think this has proven that it maybe is a good idea to continue even after after the uh, pandemic is is over. Maybe this will be sort of the future mainstream way how this community building is operating. So, uh, Mikael, would you have any comments to sort um, of... Well, on my behalf, I think it's been, a, it's been an interesting series of nine. I think uh, it's been the longest series we've had during the past two, three years at least. So it's been, uh, it's been interesting to see. 
But uh, yeah, I think the webinars have been interesting and gone well. And and like Peter said, we have retained all the material and we do edit them and try to make them polish them up a little bit. And they will be now for for you guys, the participants, and uh, and hopefully future generations available to view somewhere. Right now, they're on our YouTube channel, and I'll repost the address in the um, in the chat window. But my by my half as well. Um, thanks to everyone. Yeah, thanks. And uh, maybe we see in the in the autumn. And uh, don't hesitate to contact contact us if if you have some some uh, issues. And uh, Roman, would you like to say a few words to finish off? So yes, of course. It was it was great pleasure for us. It was really great great pleasure for us uh, to take part in this adventure of development of Elmer technology. Elmer technology for uh, companies, for commercial applications, for, for scientific development, because this was really great adventure. So thank you very much. I would like to thank you a lot for all Elmer team for their efforts, because, because it is enormous efforts and enormous help to the community. And of course, I would like to thank a lot to all my team for uh, preparation of presentation for preparation and for many, many years of working together in the fascinating world of finite element modeling. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And with those words, have a nice summer, everybody. And bye-bye. Uh,